Before we do too much more with Git and we start to make real Git commits and work with files, first of all, I think we should get our clients configured. I'm going to start by showing you a list of the config options that I have on my Git client. So the command there is git config L, and that's a list of all of the configuration set up on this repository, which has inherited from my global settings. Git has three levels of configuration. The first level is system level. So that is all the users on a particular machine. We don't use this one a lot as typically you'll be using Git on your own laptops. The next level is global. And those are settings which will apply to all of your repositories. Most of what we configure will apply to all your repositories, but sometimes it is useful to have the ability to override settings locally. And then there's local settings where you can set things which are specific to this repository. Now the default is local. So when you do want to set a global setting, you need to specifically say that that is what you are setting. We'll start with the basics. So we're going to look at, first of all, setting your username and your user email address. This is really important because those details are associated with every commit that you make. And if they're not set correctly, or if they're default to whatever is your system settings, then you may find that either your access control doesn't work or you're not getting credit for your commits on GitHub, for example. So to set something like this, if I change my username for a moment, then you would do git config. Now, username is typically a global setting. So to set a global setting, which will be used for all your repositories so that you don't have to configure it every time, we use the dash dash global switch. And then we do user.name and then the value that we want to set it to. So I'm just going to use a Jane in my name, which I sometimes do. There we go. It just comes back, doesn't show you any output, but you can check the setting by saying, what is the config? And it will come back and tell you. So if you run the config command without setting the value, it will get the value instead, show you what it's currently set to. You can also use local settings, so git config without the dash dash global. And I would use that typically for things which are not the same on every repository. For example, at work, my repositories use a user.email that is for my corporate identity not for my usual Lorna Jane, open source identity. So for all of my work repositories, I then set the local setting to override the email to be correct for my work address. So that's quite a good example. Here you can see I'm setting things on the command line. That's for a couple of reasons. One is I usually use Git from the command lines, and this is my tool. But also because it's text-based, it's much easier for you to look up the commands that I've run, read the manual pages, and understand what you're seeing. The command line is also available on every platform, so it doesn't matter what operating system you're using or which other tools you use. These examples will work for you. Am I advocating you using the command line? No, not really. I think whatever tools you use in your daily development, all of the modern tools will have some level of Git integration. So especially for day-to-day -day things, so adding, committing files, we'll see examples of that in a moment, then those things will all want to be done in whatever tools you're using already day to day. So if you're using Sublime Text, if you're using Eclipse, if you're using NetBeans, all of those will have Git integration. And that's probably the first tools I would recommend that you choose. If you find that you don't get on with those tools, there are some specific Git tools, which could be really, really useful. SourceTree is a good Git specific tool. Tower is another one. You could also try the clients that GitHub have released, and that's for Mac and for Windows. They've got GUI clients, which might be a good choice for you. So just keep trying different clients until you find something that you can be comfortable with. For this course, we'll continue to use the command line. It's much easier for you to use and to follow what's happening. That's why I've picked that for these examples. A couple more config settings that I want to mention before I move on. Those are the core.editor, and the auto CRLF settings. So core.editor is which editor would you like to use when you need to edit a file for Git? Usually this will be writing a commit message. It can be a bunch of things. It gets very text-based. If you are not a Vim user, I strongly recommend that you set your core.editor config setting to be whatever tool you would rather use. If you're on the command line and you don't want to use Vim, then something like Nano might work on a GUI system I sometimes use gedit on Ubuntu, Sublime Text, Atom, whatever you want. But set that config now, otherwise you'll end up in Vim in a few minutes' time. I also want to mention the core.autocrlf. This is to do with line endings. And it's quite important to get it right, particularly because when you're collaborating with people using different platforms, which hopefully we will be, different systems use different line endings. 
it can be very confusing. It can look like lots of things have changed when actually just the line endings have changed. So the setup is quite straightforward. You can see that my core.auto CRLF is set to input. I'm a Linux user and Mac users should use the same. Windows users, if you set your core.auto CRLF to true, you should find that Git then does the right thing with your line endings as well. So we won't see lots of changes within our repositories. While we're doing setup, I would also like to set up your SSH key to access GitHub. Now this is relatively straightforward. First, we'll generate a key. And to do that, I use a tool called SSH key gen. And I give it some settings, just putting my email address in here. And I ask it to generate. So it says, I'm generating a public private key pair. Enter the file. The defaults here are almost always great. So yes, please save in this file. Enter a passphrase. You should always enter a passphrase, so I'm typing one now. And you enter it again, which stops you from mistyping. If you do, it'll pick it up. Okay, so I've created an SSH key and it shows me where it's saved. Your identification has been saved here and the public key is in that location. What we want to do is get the public key and copy that and then we'll use it to control our access to GitHub. All right, so I will just get that public key so that I can copy it. I have gedit installed, so that's an easy way to do it. And it is in this directory, sshidrsa.pub. There it is. So I'm going to copy that whole thing. Make sure you are copying your .pub file. Private keys look different. It should look a bit like this. And we'll go over and add it to GitHub. OK, so on GitHub, you're looking for this settings button in the top right hand side. On the settings page, go to SSH keys and go to add an SSH key. All you need to do here is give the key a name. I'm calling mine Lorna's demo key as I'm just showing you this and then paste the public key. Click add key and you can see it has prompted me for my password. This is just to make sure that I am definitely me. There we go. You can see that the key is there as the last item on the list. That's my public key. Now I've done that, I should be able to access GitHub over SSH so I can use the SSH URLs. I won't need to re-enter my credentials. Let's just check that our connection's working by trying to access GitHub from the command line. It'll allow you to SSH in, but it won't actually give you a shell. It'll just tell you if your connection was successful. So the command for this, SSH with dash T and git at github.com. This is to test whether our keys are working correctly. GitHub comes back and says, hi, Lorna Jane, you've successfully authenticated. I can't get shell access. GitHub doesn't allow me that, but it's confirming that my access is working correctly. So with that, we've got our Git tools configured correctly, including our editor. We've got our SSH key created and set up on GitHub, and we're all ready to go ahead and do the next sections using Git to work with our web development projects.